Central. We pray that everyone has an amazing day at work. We pray that God's grace and mercy would be on you as you're getting ready to start your day. Miss Morgan, are you still on here? Grace, I pray for healing in your shoulder and your arm. I lay my hands right now in faith that it be done. Every muscle, every bone, all the tissue. Okay. By faith. And they get way over there. All right. So Miss Morgan asked me a question that we've answered a couple of times, and I don't mind answering this question several times. If you have to go, go ahead and go. Um, if you have prayer requests, you can still put them in the, the comments. The prayer team is still here. And the prayer team will pray over you. If you got to get out of here, have an amazing day. May the Lord bless your hands, bless your mind to do everything the Lord has for you. Miss Morgan, how much time do you have? Do I need to make this the quick version or the short version? She asked the question, I need some more teaching on fasting. And I want to make sure that we as the body of Christ are biblically sound to the theology or the 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 words of, of Christ. We're not making this stuff up. We're not going by tradition. We're not going by what the church said. We're not going by what some pastor said in a book. But that we are looking at the word of God and following what the word of God says. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Summer. Listen, if you got to get out of here, don't forget about our Faith, Love, Marriage Conference. It's free for everybody. Separated, divorced, dating, single. Faithlove.site. Faithlove.site. Go check us out. If you need life coaching, if you need somebody in your life that's going to push you and help you in the different areas that you need. If you need a plan or a purpose, you need goals, go up to my profile page. Brother Ken is available. Go to www.abundantly.site. And if you're looking for some Christian merchandise, Brother Ken's trying to do what the Lord wants him to do. Go to W. By B Y F dot site. I should put all these. Well, they're all in my profile. Just go to my profile and check them out. I also need prayer, as I have told others when I was fasting. Okay. Madison, absolutely. You fit right in perfectly here. The Lord is a healer. All right. How much time do you have, Miss Morgan? 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Do I need to make this fast or do I need to take my time? All right. As she's putting it in the chat, I'll get started. So fasting, 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 fasting. What does the Bible say about fasting? Um, I would have to start you all the way where it first began and where the very first fast was talked about in the Bible. And so whenever you, and this is with anything in life, not just biblical stuff. If you want to get to the definition or the reasoning behind something, you got to go to its origin. The origin is important. Why do we do what we do? What's the purpose behind why we're doing it and where did it come from? And so when you go to the Bible, and I, I wish I had the time to really point you to every scripture in here. Um, Yeshua told the children of Israel to commence a fast for their sins. You'll find that the word fasting or purification is brought up often in alignment to fest. A feast and festivals, anytime that there was a sacrifice or a burnt offering. The, the, the fast in the Bible was associated with sin. Let me be very clear here so you can hear this. Um, and, I'm, and I'm searching my word. Uh, my notes are in the other room on, on my computer. I, I could go there and get them. But I believe the Holy Spirit is going to lead me. We talked about some of this yesterday. Um, but they would, they would fast. They would go without eating food in observance for sin. 
They were, they were asking God to have mercy on them. I would go to my room without eating tonight. Shame on me. Sackcloth and ashes, burnt offering. I'm sorry. And the priest would go before the Lord and say, the people are so sorry. We've sinned against you once again, almighty God. And then after the fast, they would eat. You can find those illustrations all throughout the New Testament. I'm trying to find you one. So that's that's the origin. You can believe me. You can go study it. Take my word for it. But don't take my word for it. Go, Please go study for yourself. That's the origin of fasting with sin. When, we, when you understand the origin of, of fasting, then it makes sense when you read it everywhere else. It was, a, it was a solemn time. It was a sorrowful time. It was a sad time. You often found that fasting was associated with mourning sin, mourning loss. David fasted when he lost his, uh, when his, when his son was sick. He shouldn't have got Bathsheba pregnant in the first place. And so he fasted in a morning. I sinned. I sinned. Shame on me. I'm so sorry. All throughout the Bible, Old Testament, they mourned sin. They fasted. Sackcloth. Ashes. Ripped their clothes. Poured ashes on their head. Went without eating. Brought their best calves. Fasted. That's fasting. Okay. So you get to the New Testament. And what does the Bible say about fasting? Matthew chapter 17 says, turn to Matthew chapter 17. And this is so clear. I don't know why the body of Christ doesn't teach this. Matthew 17. Hold on, bear with me. Here's what Jesus said. I, I said it was Matthew. We just read this yesterday. I should already have memorized this. I want to point you to it. I want you to read it with me. <clears throat> so we're all on the same page. I did this yesterday. Look right over it. Yep. Yeah, so we'll we'll start there, Matthew 17. But there was the other scripture that I, I need to go find, where the disciples of the Pharisees and John asked Jesus, "Why why doesn't why don't your disciples fast?" And that's the answer I'm looking for. <clears throat> I thought there was another backup scripture. No, you're right. You're right. Matthew 6. So, so understanding Matthew, so we're going to walk through this quickly, but we're going to take our time and we're going to let the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit speak, just speak to us right now. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 18, Yeshua is explaining to them how to pray, how to forgive, and then he says, when you fast, when you mourn, again, understanding that fasting means mourning, sin. When you decline your food, he said, don't do it publicly. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't try to look disheveled. So just, just those first two sentences, no one should ever even know before the resurrection. And I want to be very clear how God set this up. Before resurrection, because he still had three years to spend with them. 
This was written at the very beginning of his ministry. This was written or given to them in a way <clears throat> that allowed them to see him over the next three years. They had to watch him. They were, they were all eyes on Yeshua, all eyes trying to point their finger at him. And so he said, when you fast, no one should ever even know. You should put on festive clothes. No one should ever suspect that you are hungry, except your father knows and he'll reward you. And then he goes into storing up treasures in heaven. And so this section in Matthew chapter six is pre-resurrection. He teaches us post-resurrection. It's not to cast out demons. If you read here in Matthew chapter 17, and isn't to get uh, any type of uh, answers from the Lord. It was due to mourning. See, the people at that time understood the origin of fasting. It was, I sinned. We read this and think it has everything to do with getting our, 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 our supernatural gifts and we think it's to get closer to the Lord and have some type of awakening and some type of aha, you know, uh, uh, moment. When you understand the origin of fasting, it has everything to do with sin. So he says, oh, and when you fast, when you mourn sin, no one should ever know you're mourning sin. No one should, should even suspect that you've walked around and you've sinned. You shouldn't be feeling bad for yourself. You shouldn't be walking around with your head down. You shouldn't be sitting there looking like, oh, woe is me. I've sinned. I'm fasting. Sackcloth and ashes, burnt, burnt offering. No one should ever know. That's between you and God. That's between you and God. So now let's go over to Matthew chapter 9. You with me, Sister Morgan, so far? Matthew chapter 9, this is what Yeshua said. One day, verse 14, his disciples, John's disciples, came to Yeshua, chapter 9. Hey, why don't your disciples fast? Wait a minute, wait a minute. So he's been with them for maybe a year now. They've been watching him. They've been watching him, seeing what him and his disciples do. And he noticed, they noticed that they're not mourning sin. They noticed that Yeshua's disciples aren't pausing and, and you know, acting all dis disheveled because of, of sin. Why don't, your dis why don't your disciples fast like the J John's disciples and the Pharisees and listen to what Yeshua says if the churches just read this they would stop with these Daniel fast they would stop with these corporate fasts. even the corporate fast is out of order according to Matthew chapter 6 if, if all you believe was Matthew chapter 6 every time a pastor said we're going to fast every time somebody got up and announced I'm fasting it's wrong Every time someone tells you, well, girl, you know I'm fasting, well, you just, you just lost your blessing. If, if we went with the old system, but we're not in the old system. Here's why. Yeshua says this. This is the answer that he gave them when, he, when they asked him about fasting. Verse 15. So the bridegroom's, uh, the bridegroom's friends mourn? Ah. Oh. Yeshua understood fasting because he created the fast. He's the one that told Abraham and Moses and Elijah and Jeremiah that you mourn sin by not eating sackcloth and ashes, burnt offerings, because you mourn sin. That was the whole point of not eating. Go to your room tonight. You're not eating. Shame on you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Should the bridegroom's friend, I'm reading from the Living Bible version. I don't know what the King James says. Should they mourn? Go without food? Wait, Yeshua literally just gave us the definition himself of what a fast was. Mourning, going without food. Mourning, going without food. Should, should the bridegroom's friend mourn and go without food while he's here? Wait, while well, I have Jesus with me, while well, I have Yeshua, Savior of the world, who took care of all sin, is there a reason to fast? 
When I no longer mourn my sin, I'm no longer guilty. There is no condemnation. I'm a conqueror. I'm free. Should should a person who's free feel bad about being locked up? Should you mourn? He said, should, I'm trying to bring this home. I'm trying to make it plain. I'm praying that the Holy Spirit is speaking through me. Should the bridegroom's friend, we're the bridegroom's friends, mourn, go without eating. He said, but a time will come. It's coming. I'm going to go away for three days. I'm going to be gone for another 40 to 50 and they're going to be a little confused. They're going to be worried. So it will come a time. You're going to see them fast. And like they ask them, think about the context of the question. We don't see your people doing what we do. What's different? What, what changed from the laws of Moses and all the things that Abraham did and Jeremiah told the people to fast often? Remember, Jeremiah was the weeping prophet. The one who was constantly going before the Lord saying, God, we've sinned again. This nation is so sinful. Fast, mourn your sin. And they would mourn their sin and Jeremiah would cry again. Lord, we've sinned against you again. And the Lord would say, all right, fast again. Mourn your sins. So they don't see Yeshua's disciples mourning sin. He said, but there's going to come a time where they're going to feel a little lost. You're going to see them go without eating. And then he says this. This is the, the parable of all parables. We've misunderstood this parable, Sister Stephanie. Verse 16. And who would patch up an old garment with an unshrunk cloth? For the patch would tear. The patch would tear and make the whole worse. The patch will tear and make the whole Worse, who would take an Old Testament rule and put it with the New Testament promise? By putting those two things together, you're gonna you're gonna tear up something. You're gonna mess up the new garment. You're gonna mess up the new cup. You're gonna mess up the new promise. The new promise was faith alone. The new promise was just believe. The new promise was anyone who believed would be saved. The new promise was just have mustard seed faith. The new promise was, do you believe? That was it. That's it. That's it. To go get the old garment and try to say, but you all, but you also got to tarry and fast. You also got to sow a seed tithe. You also got to take that old process and add it to this new process. And Yeshua said, who would do such a thing? Some people can't receive this because they're not open to Bible teaching. They just go off traditions. They go by what their preacher said, and I pray for them. Listen to the rest of this. For the old wine skin would burst under pressure. We got people right now wondering why, there's, why their issues aren't being healed and delivered because they're doing it. The wrong way they're trying to mix two systems they feel the pressure of life all over them and they really think that going to church and listening to what the preacher have said about fasting and tithing and they don't understand why they don't get their breakthrough well, it's because you're about to burst under pressure you got two systems going that wasn't called for only the new wine skins are used only the new system he talked in parable because he knew everybody wouldn't get this. Only those who can hear his voice would get this. Only the new wine skins are used to store new wine. The new wine. Only the new process. The, the new covenant. The new promise. Chapter 17. And I've said this before. But don't. Take my word for it. I am not that preacher that says, just believe everything I said. I want you to go study to show yourself approved. I want you to go study this for yourself when I'm done, Miss Stephanie. Here's what we find in Matthew chapter 17. We find one unique circumstance in the entire Bible where the word fasting is used with prayer. One. 
300 plus miracles, 300 plus uh, observations were made in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John of the Lord healing, delivering, raising people from the dead, limbs growing back, blinded eyes being opened, women with issues of blood, women with back issues, Peter's mom being sick. I go down a list of all of the miracles that Yeshua did. And of all the miracles he did, it was all faith. That was it. Faith alone. That was it. Faith, 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 faith. You find one incident. And this is where Bible uh, apologetics and, and how important it is to be able to exergete that just that word simply means to have a clear understanding of the, the context of what the Lord was saying for us, what he was saying to them. To how does it make sense today versus who the audience he was speaking to then? When you look at the full context of the entire Bible, the New Testament, you have to ask yourself the question. Is this biblically sound based on Bible, based on all Bible? One incident where it said in Matthew chapter 17, he comes down a mountain after being filled with God's presence. And there was a man down here. His son was being pushed all over the place by an evil spirit, great, greatly troubled. And he said, your disciples can even heal him. And Jesus says, O oh, ye of little faith, you faithless people, faith, you just don't believe sometimes. The Bible says that Yeshua rebuked the demon and it left. Afterwards, his disciples asked Yeshua, hey, hey, why, why couldn't we do that? And this is where you have to become somewhat of a Bible scholar. You don't have to have a Bible certificate. You don't have to go deep into the word. All you got to do is go get you an old manuscript like a 1300 Bible. Go, go look up the Septuagint or the Dead Sea Scrolls to understand, to understand what the original context was written what was said in the original bible we know that the king james version and some other bibles added the word fasting in some of your bibles they've even put a a note at the bottom that says this isn't in the ancient manuscripts like we didn't find this in the scrolls someone added this in the 1000 time period just to give it some oomph and this is the part where we as christians have to be honest and open about the bible the Bible is, it is the word of God, the, 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 the foundation of his principles, the foundation of what he taught us is truly the word of God, the principles of God. Have a good day. Have a good day at work. Bless my wife. Keep us safe from all those people. Up there. Keep us safe on the campus. So. If it was added, why was it added? You got to ask that question. And who added it? And we don't have time to do too much research this morning. But as you're reading this and you're going to go do your own study and research, you can just Google it. And you'll find that it was added. Because everywhere else, Yeshua says, according to your faith, according to what you believe, according to your belief system. Even the, the man that was waiting for, you know, the, the water to move at the pool. Remember that story? Once a year, an angel or a miracle happened on the pool. And the first ones who got into the pool were healed. And he was crippled on a mat. And no one was able to put him in the pool. He played victim for 38 years. He played victim because life was too hard on him. And I just don't have anybody that cares for me. And, and his life is just too hard. And Yeshua asked him a very simple question. Do you really want to be healed? Like, like do you really want to come out of this victimization uh, space? Do you believe that you can be healed? He didn't say, okay, I need a, I need a seed offering. You haven't tithed all week. You got to go fast a little bit. He didn't say any of that. He simply said, 
It's according to your faith. It's according to what you expect me to do. It's according So 300 plus times we find in the New Testament Yeshua just heals people because they believe. That's it. That's the teaching. The Bible says that when he taught them this, he said, oh, the reason you couldn't do it. Yeah, there's somebody Nancy's looking at it. The reason that you couldn't do it is because your faith wasn't strong. Y'all didn't believe this. This man was was hopping all over the place, jumping around. It scared you. When you saw the, the son, this man's son having fits, screaming out, out of control, you, you, you kind of took a step back. I said, whoa. And because you did not have faith, it didn't happen. And this is what I read this morning. But I read it over in Luke. I read this in Luke. If you had faith even as small as a tiny mustard seed, here he says you can say to a mountain. In Luke he says you can say to a mulberry tree. This is where, again, the word of God is still the word of God. The principles, the foundation that Jesus lived, he died, he rose again. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Like that part of the Bible is not wrong. But there are word translations that are wrong. Stay away from the message Bible. Be very, very careful of the NIV version. The NIV version has taken words, added words, removed words. I have on my TikTok, I have on my TikTok right now, pinned uh, different Bible versions. You have three different types of Bibles. I won't teach all of it right now, but you can go look at it. You have the word for word where they went and got the Bible and tried to find their exact word and what it meant to us right out of the caves, right out of the scrolls. Then you have a thought for thought and then you have a paraphrase. All of them are good depending on what you read and there's a scale. Go to my profile. It's pinned to the top. Um, and I put that on there because the word of God is important to us. Like we have to know what the word is saying. So with that understanding, Miss Stephanie and everybody who's still here, I don't have to fast to get closer to God because it's all according to my faith, my dedication, my heart's desire, my hunger and thirst my hunger and thirst for righteousness not my depravity to the hunger and thirst for food I would like to say that I'm your witness brother Ken doesn't fast the night before and we've had many many moves of God in this chat we've seen God move and I'm not bragging I'm trying to share like Paul would say follow me as I'm following Christ brother Ken is not starving himself to get closer to the Lord. I read my word. I study the word. I try to hear his voice. Starving myself was just going to probably make me irritable. Now, now there are benefits to fast. You can go Google what are the benefits of a fast. And I'm not going to lie to you. I have gone without food all day. And I'll drop two or three pounds. Brother Ken, I get on that scale and see that one 80 and get frustrated with itself because I want to be around 170 lean and fit at 6'3 not too skinny but not too fat and once I start seeing that little pooch down there because I had a little bit too much chocolate I stay away from sodas I'll say you know what I'm only going to eat one meal today I'm going to cut the grass I'm going to go play basketball I'm going to walk with the wife I know that's going to burn calories. And I'm going to eat one meal tomorrow. And I'll get on the scale and that scale will have gone from 180 to 175. I said, I need two more days of this. Spiritually has nothing to do with my walk with God. Spiritually, I'm wherever I am because of my reading, my prayers, my devotion. The, the fasting did not, like there's no 
connection biblically of, of relationship because it was all about mourning sin. Let's fast forward to the morning of sin. What did Jesus do for us? What did Yeshua do for us on the cross? What did he do for sin once and for all? Once and for all, what did he do? Y'all can talk back to me this morning. And for those who have fasted before, be honest. Be honest. I mean, be honest with us this morning. I'm going to fast to, to get my breakthrough, and I'm never going to do that again. And then a year later, you're doing it again. So you went two weeks without eating just to cuss somebody out all over again, just to go back to the cigarettes all over again. It had nothing to do with, because if think about it this way, think about it this way. If, if all it took was me to not eat for a week, to, to get all my breakthroughs, then why don't we have all our breakthroughs? Because it's according to faith. It's according to God's timing. It's according to God's will. Yeshua died on the cross once and for all, for all sins. All. That was the last time we would ever mourn sin. That was the last time that a sacrifice, the sacrifice, would be made. The perfect sacrifice. That was the last time that we as a people would go before the Lord and say, Oh, sackcloth and ashes, fasting, the perfect lamb, we've sinned. He said, as long as I'm here, as long as they have the son of man, as long as you have the son of man, there's no need to fast. He said that. Matthew chapter six was to a group of people who had not yet seen him operate. He, he had to include that. He had to include it because he had three years of ministry of people who didn't see the fulfillment of the morning yet the death and then when he addresses it in the chapter later he said oh it's going it's going to come a time when they're going to they're going to mourn final the final morning the final morning i'll be on the cross but after that it's the new promises and here's the question i would even ask of you to ask your pastors since we now know the scripture we know the word of god Ask the pastor, hey, why don't we do the sackcloth part where we tear our, our clothes? And why don't we put the ashes on our head also? Because that was all the part of the fasting rituals, the, the sacrificial rituals, the festivals. Why don't we go get a lamb or a, a, a calf and burn the calf out back with our fasting? Because it all goes together. How, why did we just pick one? of those rules I get it I get it I get it I get it because we were taught that way I tell this story all the time sometimes when I preach and I'll tell it right now there's a story uh, of a family they were all over for Thanksgiving Christmas pick one it's your story to, to kind of go through here you've heard this story before just ignore me as I tell it my way and so uh, the granddaughter is actually in the kitchen with mama and they're, they're cooking a ham. And so the, the mama cuts the ham on its ends. It cuts, she cuts the ends off the ham, you know, dresses the ham, puts the ham in the pan, big pan, puts it in the oven. The kid is inquisitive. Mama, why you cut the, the ends off the ham? She said, I don't know. That's how I saw my mama do it. So they go in there to the to the living room. Mama, grandma, why did you cut the, the ends off the ham? She said, I don't know. I just saw my mama do it. Well, great grandma happened to still be alive. Wasn't at the house yet. They wait for great grandma to come over to the house. Great grandma finally comes over to the house. Everybody's anticipating 80-year-old great-grandma giving them this revelation, giving them this revelation of the secret of cutting the ends off the ham. Great-grandma, we're here cooking the ham that you taught everybody through the generations. 
Great grandma, why did you cut the ends off the ham before you put it in the oven? She said, because my pan was too small and the ham wouldn't fit. So I cut the ends off so it would fit in the pan. I had a little pan and a little oven. They carried that tradition on without knowing the history of why. We've been cutting that, the ends off the ham with tithes. We've been cutting the ends off the ham with fasting. We've been cutting the hems off, the, the, the ends of the ham off with speaking in tongues. Y'all want me to keep going this morning? We follow so many traditions of men that we have not taken the time to just go read it. And with the technology that we have now, there's no excuses. It could be an excuse 30 years ago without a Google, without a Strong's Concordance, without a Bible dictionary. But be, with all of the resources, even on your Bible app, there are 60 versions of the Bible on your Bible app. There's a 1400 King James version and there's a... Uh, 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 What's the one they put in your at the hotel? That's a really good original Bible. <sighs> Somebody remind me. It's in my head. Holy Spirit, bring it to my remembrance. I can't think. That's going to bother me. Gideon, that's what I was saying. Who was the who was the soldier that had to tell them to go lap and only get the ones who drink the water the right way? The Gideon version. That's a really good version. I think it it's as almost as accurate as you're gonna find. I don't think it's in my charts that I have on there. But my point is this: just keep learning, keep studying, and I'll tell you. Even now, don't take my word for it. Like, go study this for yourself. Our problem in church is that we've sat there. We don't take notes. I say we. I'm just talking in general. In general, I've been I've preached many a sermons, many a sermons in front of people over the last 30 years, and people don't take notes. They'll give you an amen, and boy, ain't that right? A, shouting and stuff. But you hadn't taken one note. You didn't go back and study it that night. I've even gotten up in the pulpit many times and said, please, please, if, if there's anything you can walk away with, write this down. Go study it this week. Do not take my word for it. Let the Lord give you his own revelation to you. And people still will not sit there and take the note. Do you know that your brain might have 45 minutes? I'm so in awe that we stay on here this long because your brain sometimes only has an attention span of 45 minutes unless it's very entertaining, very compelling. You will fall asleep in a movie if it's not compelling the entire way. But if it's compelling, you you walk around the fair for three hours because it's compelling. You, 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 you'll spend time with family and you won't look, you'll look up. And four hours had gone by and you said you was only going to be there for an hour or two. And it was so compelling. It kept your attention. We only remember those things in our brain. It's the psychological things that I've read. Everybody that took psychology should know this. We remember what, what was said in the beginning. We remember what was kind of said at the end. And everything in the middle is maybe a miss depending on how important it was. So you got to preach this up for an hour preaching. Did you remember everything he said? Probably not. I don't even remember half the stuff I say here. I have to go back and watch it and say, oh, we did pray about that. Stephanie, talk to me real quick. What's going through your head right now? Did this help? Nancy, talk to me right now. For those who have heard this teaching before, I pray that God continues to bless you as you help others understand that God's not waiting on your tithe to bless you. He's not waiting on you to fast to heal you. That's the old system. Regarding tithe, you give what your heart says give. It's not 
it's not 10%. It's not 10%. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you're misled. You give according to your heart. You're not a not a, a Jew who has not accepted Yeshua as king. If you were Jewish and you did not accept Jesus as, as Lord, yes, follow all of the Old Testament rules and laws, all of them. You don't get to pick and choose just the tithe. Do you understand what they did to us by not giving us the full context of the scripture? If you're going to follow the tithe rule, oh, and they love to use uh, Malachi. They love to threaten people with Malachi, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. But what about not wearing cotton and polyester together? And what about the feast we're supposed to have every seven years or uh, the the uh, uh, different rules around women need to be away from men in the camp for seven days after they menstruate. Like, why do you pick and choose? All because it makes sure that the pastor's salary still gets uh, meets the budget, and we have that food uh, uh, festival. We end up giving half the food away because we ordered too much or cooked too much. Got to be a good steward. Yeah, it's in the Bible. But it's an it's an old rule, Samantha. It's an old rule. I can sit here and start reading you all all these old rules. And again, you follow Jesus even said if you follow one, you gotta follow them all. You don't get you don't get to pick and choose which of these rules you're gonna follow. They're interesting. Very, very interesting. Every firstborn male, if you decide not to redeem it, then its neck must be broken. Talking about cattle, donkeys. Why don't agriculturalists do that? Especially the Christian ones. You must remember to celebrate these three annual religious festivals. I'm in Exodus chapter 34, the festival of weeks, the festival of first wheat and the harvest festival. Why don't they, why don't your churches follow through on all of these? On occasion of these three occasions, all the men and boys of Israel shall appear before the Lord. You know, you must not use unleavened bread. So many. And the Lord told Moses some of these and others. He just made up because the people's hearts were, were wayward. Priests will take a handful of finely grounded flour with the olive oil and the incense and mix them, burn them on the altar. Why don't the pastors do that part? I'm in Leviticus chapter six. Never eat blood, whether of birds or animals. Anyone who does shall be excommunicated from the people so everybody who gets their their food rare or what is it um, well medium well or whatever it is where you see that red steel they should be excommunicated why don't we follow that like how do you pick and choose if it's an offering of thanksgiving Leviticus chapter 7 it should be included in the sacrifice if it's unleavened bread, along with olive oil, loaves of but like I don't see no olive oil on the altars, bread on the altar. Where are these? Like, why did you pick and choose this offering of tithe, 
but not the offering of unleavened bread, the offering of olive oil. Y'all want me? I, I'm just, I'm just being real. Nikki says, "Should you pay for anointing oil?" No, no, because we're filled with the Holy Spirit. The anointing is in us. The kingdom of God lives inside of me. I don't have to go purchase anything. Don't purchase towels, blankets. None of that stuff is going to get you the anointing. Ever. That's why we don't ask for, I don't ask for offerings on here because that's not what God said. It's free. It was. She said I, the law was written in our heart. And so the original 10 is in our heart. The original 10. But the, it wasn't written in our heart so we can follow it. Paul said in Romans chapter 6, 7, and 8 that the law was put in our heart to expose us of how bad we really are. The, the law didn't come to... That, that, <laughs> this is a bad example, but this is a good parable. That speed limit sign isn't there to keep Brother Ken within the speed limit. It's there to tell Brother Ken how, how, how much of a sinner he can be sometime breaking the law. It's in my heart not to go that fast. I know that's dangerous. I should be going 80 and a 75. 85 and a 75. So when I see that, that sign that says 75 is 75 in Oklahoma and even 80 on one of our turnpikes. I love taking that turnpike to Tulsa. It says 80 miles per hour. So then in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, if it says 80, then I can do 85, 90 because I can just go above it a little bit. But in my heart, that sign is just a way of saying, Brother Ken, you're a big old fat sinner. It exposes me. It exposes me. I look down at the, uh, uh, the speedometer and I'm like, oh, I've sinned. I've broken the law. The laws that he put in our heart were the basics that he gave Moses, the original 10. We all know in our heart you shouldn't take somebody's life. We all know in our heart you shouldn't lie to people. We all know in our heart that you should not look at somebody else's wife and commit adultery or cheat or fornicate. Like, it's just wrong. In our heart, we know that you should treat your parents right. You shouldn't be mean and ugly, disrespectful to your parents. In our heart, these are like the things he did put in our heart. Even those who don't follow Yeshua, those who call themselves... And be careful using certain words here. We don't be banned. But those who don't believe in a God still believe in moral ethics. And you ask those people, what, so what is that mor morality based upon? Like, Because you don't get to make up your own morality. And if you don't believe in God, where do you get the morality of not murdering somebody? Oh, it just, I mean, everybody knows that. Yeah, because God put it in your heart. Everybody knows the basics. All right. It's 10, 10 07. It's 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9. We've been on here for four hours. Wonderful day of prayer. Wonderful day of teaching. Miss Stephanie, did I lose you? Did she have to go? I believe when we give our first to God to honor Him. Put him first. He multiplies. I do believe in that principle. I also believe, though, I do believe that God looks at the heart. I believe if your bills are due and all you got left to your name is $500. And when I say left to your name, the paycheck hadn't even hit yet. You've already done your budget. You've already done your budget and rent is $2,100. And the light bill is four hundred, and the, the the gas bill is seven hundred, and groceries are gonna cost you two to three hundred that you put to the side. I mean, you've already done the bills, and the money is already gone, and all you got left after you've kind of budgeted out the bills. Some people say, "But aren't you supposed to give first? The first, oh, oh gosh, should I be teaching this? Are they ready for this? The first obligation is family." 
God put Adam and Eve in the garden and said, I need you to multiply. I need you to take care of this. It's already mine. I own a cattle on a thousand hills. Uh, it's uh, Everything you have is already mine. And if you're going to give, listen to Brother Ken. I know this is different. I know this is different than what people teach. If you're going to give first, which is great, just give it from your heart. So if all, all you say at the beginning of your budget, I'm going to put $20 aside for the Lord. God honors that. It could be 1% of your total income. It could be 50% of your total weekly income. He looks at your heart and he says, okay, you're trying to do right by me. You want to help people. And, the, and oh, y'all ready for this? The $20 don't have to go to the church. The $20 can go to anyone in need. Let me say that a different way so y'all can hear the Lord this morning. Listen to the spirit. God said in his word, when you was, when I was sick, when I was in prison, when I was homeless, when I was thirsty, when I was hungry, you were there. Well done. And they're going to say, Lord, when did, when did we see you hungry, thirsty, in prison, homeless? Like, I don't remember seeing you. He said, when you did it for the least of them, you did it for me. He did not say. When the church needed an offering, when the church needed a new roof, when the church uh, needed to fill the pantry and the, the benevolent fund, when the church needed to, to make sure that, that we got an approval on that new fence, that new church. And when the church needed to have uh, such and such day and they needed to raise pastor, pastoral funds, you get no, he was very clear when you gave to the homeless when you gave to the orphans and the widows to the sick the shut in when you help somebody in prison I saw that I have and I know I'm way off the teaching right now but when I give and I'm not saying this to brag I'm teaching to teach Lord if I need to be quiet I'm listening right now I'll be quiet He says, share, go ahead and share. He knows my heart. I'm not saying this to brag. When I give, I am truly looking for somebody in need. Like who, who really could use a hundred dollars right now? Lord, show me friends, family, somebody close to me. Someone close to me on Facebook says, hey, this person's house just burned down. Hey, man, this person just just had a situation happen and they truly have a need and I know the person I can vet the person I can feel the spirit even when I give to churches I'll sit in church and I'll sit there and I'll meditate I said I know this offering is coming up you know what I'll put on the envelope I'll put my $20 in an envelope and I'll put on there homeless people uh, the sick and shut in like I am very, very specific how I want the Lord to use my money. I don't don't just put a twenty dollar in an offering plate. You better tell them where you want your money to be used. Otherwise, that twenty dollars is going on the electric bill to keep the air running when nobody is there. Ninety percent of the time. Please give this to missions and to whoever the missionary is that you are supporting in this church. This is where I want the money to go. And if they're if they're good stewards, if the deacons or the elders in the back are good stewards to the money that's been given, they have to give the money to where the money's been asked to be used on. Please bless a family in this church who's poor or without. Kids need backpacks. Kids need school. You know what that forces them to do? Now they got to ask in the church. Now they have to seek out somebody who's poor, who needs shoes. I'm just sharing what I do. I don't know if this is right or wrong. I just go with the spirit. I go with the spirit. Please bless somebody in this church whose light bill is due. 
and I'll put whatever amount God put in my heart to put on there. They have to now go out and say, is there anybody in the church who's like Bill is new? Because we ha- they should be using the funds the way that God told them to. Please give this money to somebody who's hungry. Feed the widows. Feed the orphans in this church. Please use this money for the shut-in and the sick. Please use this money to bless prisoners of family members in this church who need Bibles or encouragement, money on their books. Please. If you just put a $100 bill in the plate, you have no idea where it's going. If you put the word tithe on your offering and you check mark it, all you're doing is paying the church's bills, the, ch- the pastor's salary. There are some really good churches. You're right, Alice, and there are some really, really, and I know a lot of them, and that's why I go. I go to those churches because I know when I when I know when I put a an offering in that plate, percentage don't matter. When I set aside time to put something in that plate, I know that they're gonna bless people. Yep, like they did in Acts. All right. Has this been helpful? Is there any other thoughts, questions that I you'd like Brother Ken to, to answer before we go? I want to thank everybody for your time. You all have been so gracious to me to let me into your home every day. I'm a regular person. If y'all met me at Walmart, I was a goofball walking through with my long, fast legs, dodging people, trying to get out the way. Allison says she thought she was the only one. Yeah. This is the Holy Spirit, Allison. We all got the same Holy Spirit. All right. I think I lost Miss Morgan. She might have had to make a round Uh, God bless you brother Jimmy all credit goes to the Lord though does sin blind you what do you mean by that Monica talk to me I don't know what that question means does sin blind you (laughs) I'll answer it but I don't know what that means. Donald said he had a good doctor's visit. Praise the Lord. Oh, there's Miss Morgan. She said this was good. God bless you. Yeah, society norms dictate morality sometimes. We got to be the change. We got to be the, the change that we expect. We do. We have to be the catalyst. That's right. Somebody, Nancy said the Ten Commandments were in the Ark of the Covenant. The others were outside of it on paper. That's good. That's good. All right. Let me scroll. I think, I think we answered everything. I think we talked about most of everything you had. <sighs> Yolanda King. Trust in the Lord. He's in control. He's not going to let you let you go without. He's not going to let you go without. Jimmy says so many have talk, turned it into a business. They have. And, and listen, I'm being very transparent. I have businesses. They are Christian related, but I try to keep them separate, Jimmy. Like I really do. Even when I mention those businesses and those that are on here know me. I feel really guilty. I start pulling back by even like, I don't even want to mention what God is doing in my life because I don't want it to, I don't want my good to be evil spoken of. I don't, I don't want to be associated with the preachers and the pastors and the prophets on here that have a cash app in their, their handle, a cash app every other second. Like what? Peter wouldn't be on here with a cash app. Paul wouldn't be on here with a cash app. 
They be on here preach the gospel hard. Preaching just like he did to the Philippians, to the Corinthians, to the Romans. That's exactly what their content would be. We already have their content. But what I wonder what Paul would say if he was here today. We already know it. You're more than conquerors. You can do all things like we have his content. We know exactly what he would say. Talk to me, Monica. What was that question about? Help me answer it or help me to understand it. If not, we're going to get on out of here. I think this was good today. It's good every day. It was good every day. Pray, pray for your pastor, Elton. Triple bypass. Lord already knows. Father, have your way. That's awesome, Lily. That's awesome. That's All right, Lily, as you head to the ER, may you get the right diagnosis. According to your faith, may you be healed. Lord, protect her and bless her. Protect her and bless her. Protect her and bless her is our prayer. Saw your prayer request. Uh, Lakey, uh, Lakia, may God give you strength today. You can make it. You're going to make it. God's not going to fail you. You're going to get through today. Blessings. Because if you sin, have you ever felt you were right? But God showed you different and you repented. Um, let me think. I mean, the Holy Spirit always convicts me with love. Whenever I think I was doing something right, the only thing that I can maybe associate that with, Monica, is when I feel like I'm speaking up for myself or social justice issues or uh, trying to, to do right by somebody by, you know, calling HR or asking for a manager in my heart. You want justice to be be felt right. There have been times I've had situations I've been pulled over for no reason. You can imagine why you can imagine why. And I get pulled over. Me and the wife are in the car. And attitude attitude from the start license oh okay you know what you were doing why are you talking to me like this and i gotta humble myself i'm cognitive of the fact that this could be my last day depending on this guy's attitude and the fear that he thinks he has of me and what the enemy wants him to do with me so I'm right in my heart. I don't know if this is the question you were asking me. I'm just telling you what Brother Ken has been through multiple, multiple times. And I sit there and I'm like, but this is wrong. You don't get to talk to me this way. I didn't do anything. You haven't even explained what I did. And a few times, a few times, I've justified talking back to the officer. Not harsh, but with understanding. Can you tell me why you pulled me over? And why are you talking to me like this? What did I do to you? And later the Lord would say that wasn't necessary. You didn't have to defend yourself. But I said, but God, somebody has to speak up. They can't, not all. I have friends who are cops. So this isn't a cop bashing situation. I'm not defund the police. I'm not all any of that stuff. All that stuff is just rubbish anyway. The, the enemy comes in and tries to divide. And so my point is this. My point is this. To answer her question, when I reflect, God says, get rid of that anger, get rid of the frustration. I said, but it's righteous anger. It's righteous anger because they had no reason to profile me or discriminate against me. All right, we're going to let you off with a warning. But what did I do wrong? What are you warning me of? Where well, you cross that line and, you know, you got to make sure you don't cross the line. Everybody crosses the lines. You pulling everybody over? Who doesn't stop at the at the stop sign and crosses lines? It was like four of us that crossed that line. Why did you pull me over? Lord says, let it go. Forgive. There's been times that I've been uh, harassed 
at shopping malls, shopping centers, like intentionally followed. I go to this part of the store, you follow me. I go to this part of the store, y'all still following me. I'm just shopping. I'm just shopping. What what did I do? And I have been just, I felt justified to give them a piece of my mind lovingly. I want to talk to whoever's in charge here. Who's the, who's the supervisor? This is my flesh coming out. Sir, how can we help you? So those two guys over there, this is Brother Ken. I'm just telling y'all of them. I can't even walk through your store without the two of them following me. Do I fit some type of description? Is there a reason that they chose me? Y'all don't know me. It's not right. I'm tired of this. And it has to stop. And I feel the Holy Spirit saying, why are you fighting this battle? Because somebody has to, Lord. And God would convict me. I don't know if this is what your question was. This is where I'm going. And I say, I hear the Holy Spirit saying, but, but why though? Because someone has to stand up for social justice. Someone has to be the voice. Someone has to be the Martin Luther King. And God said, but I didn't call you to be Martin Luther King. Let them follow you. Be persecuted. Be cheerful. Isn't that what you tell everybody else? Yes, it is. It is. It's what you tell everybody else. That's what I tell everybody else. So he's convicted me of what I thought was right. But at the end of the day, let it go. If they want to follow you, let them follow you. They want to pull you over, let them pull you over. Stay humble. Stay humble. Let the Lord fight your battle. Regarding any other kind of sin, lying, cheating, there's no justifying of it. The, dev the devil may try to get you to justify why you lied, why you cheated to protect myself. Because if I didn't lie, then this would have happened to me. Don't ever justify lying. We found that out with Brother David, that his lying just caused hundreds of people to get murdered. Because he tried to justify protecting himself. Just tell the truth. Yes or no. All right. Monica said it helps. If I went way too far sharing my stories, forgive me. I don't apologize, Allison. I even hate to say that I'm used to it. I'm used to it. Nancy said this has been so worth staying for four hours. Praise God. God bless you. For those that send me private messages, give me give me some time. I need to do some other stuff. I need to follow up on some items, and then I'll get back in the chat uh, or the messages, and I'll I'll follow up with all the questions or private messages that you all have sent me the last twenty four hours. DJ Cole still with us. God bless you, everybody that's still with us. That's awesome, Cobbler World. Catherine Coleman never took an offer and she didn't. And even even uh, uh, a couple of them, I was going to say some names. I'm not going to say their names. Even some of the, the ministers and ministresses giving it away early in their ministry, like early 80s, late 80s, early 90s, would say, if you just want the tape, We'll send you the CD. We'll send you the tape for free. You don't even, they, you know, nowadays don't even say, well, if you can give us a love offering of at least $20, we'll send you the book and the CD. Just, just what Brother Ken is doing. Don't, don't, don't manipulate people calling it an offering. Just ask them to buy the book. That's what I learned. That's what I've learned over the last 20 years, 30 years of watching other people. Just be honest. I have an LLC. I'm writing a book. It costs money to print the book. So you're purchasing a book. But don't disguise it and manipulate the people of God by calling it an offering. If you give us an offering for this ministry of any gift or portion, we'll send you a, a, a free copy. It's not a free copy. They paid for it. Oh, if we had this discernment. There was a, there was there was ministers that would just give out get, uh, CDs. They would give out tapes. They would give out books. And literally, you 
you wouldn't have to send in anything. I remember because I used to say I want that book, but I don't I don't have anything to give. I want the CD, but I I don't have an, you know, and if my heart felt like I'm going to put two dollars in here, I'm going to put five dollars in here. I give them something. I mean, they had to mail it. But then they changed. Something changed. And it's no longer free. I would rather, I'd rather for them to just tell the people up front. I'm just rambling now. I'm rambling. I need to get off of here. I'd just rather for them to be honest like I am up front. I'm telling you, I'm, God has put some books on my heart. I got to print the books. I got to get it to the publisher. And so you're paying for the print. You're paying for the book. The gospel is still free. The words were still inspired by me. And I'm putting a fair price on it for what I think my LLC and my, my bills need to be paid. And kids still got things coming up. I'm not trying to rip anybody off. That makes sense. Prayer for Rick Dick Dixon. Just had two stems put in his chest. You're an amazing nurse, Shana. Shana. You are an amazing nurse. I don't know how many nurses we have in this chat. I think we have about seven or eight. Each of you are amazing. But Shauna's like, pray for this person. Pray for this person. Pray for this person. I don't know if it's HIPAA. I don't know if it's outside the rules of God. But Shauna, you're an amazing nurse. God is going to reward you for caring for his people. Maybe you get their consent. I don't know. I, I, whatever you choose to do, I trust God. We're going to pray for him anyway. All right. Uh, she slept in chicken houses, broke to preach at churches. <sighs> this is awesome. I could do this all day, but I got stuff to do. Y'all got stuff to do. I have to go to work. I got to go write. I got to go finish writing some more books. I got my recovery book that I'm writing. I'm writing the entrepreneur book. I'm finishing up some edits on a uh, Christian devotional for young basketball players, young basketball players. Uh, it, it could be any sport, but it, it's related to basketball. I'm trying to get a lot of this done before Christmas. ministering to people daily uh, I'm just trying to do what the Lord wants to do I'm, I told you about the adjunct professor piece that it's just, it's just not even a lot of money I'm just happy that I'm able to to give back um, so that's what Brother Ken's getting ready to go do Stacy Ann diagnosed please pray for you I reverse that Stacy Ann if, as long as you believe you don't have that then I'll believe it with you it's according to your faith faith and if you expect God to give you wisdom and knowledge to overcome this you can nothing's impossible for God my prayer is that God gives you the strength to exercise to eat healthy and to reverse these things you can do this you just said you remember when the tracks of the word were, were handed out in Oklahoma, we had the little pieces of paper, little tracks, and we would go door to door on Saturdays. Our church would have us all go by and knock, knock and, and try to get as many people to come to the Lord as possible. So, yeah, it was free. Yeah. Okay. Praise God for you, Catherine. The KD. We got the same initials, so that, that resonates with me. May God bless that. Everything he puts in all of our all these entrepreneurs' hearts, may God bless it and multiply it a hundred times, a thousand times. Cut 59, Miss Pam, may the Lord heal you of that. We pray that the Holy Spirit gives you a good diagnosis. I want the right diagnosis so we can pray against it. The one time that I uh, vertigo, it, they say it runs in my family, but it ain't going to run in my family. Like I reverse it and end all of that. I woke up one morning, Miss Pam, and something was off. I got up 
and I immediately started wobbling to the side of the bed. And I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute, what's wrong with me? I'm disoriented, I'm off, I'm dizzy. Like, what is this? Oh, this is what my grandma used to talk about. And so I sat back down, closed my eyes. I closed my eyes, opened them again, thinking I just needed to, you know, sometimes Brother King gets up too fast. And like I've been sitting on this couch for four hours. So I know, I already know when I get up after about the eighth step, I'm going to have to pause, let the blood rush through the body. Otherwise, this happens every time. I just know my body and I'll pause. Now, sometimes I see how far I can make it up the hall before that that sensation of of not allowing blood to rush and getting up too fast happens but so i thought that's what it was i thought maybe i got up too fast early in the morning i was off i paused to see okay i'm lightheaded all right i'm good let's go well it didn't go away and i said wait a minute something wrong with me i start binding the devil rebuking the devil I said, devil, you can't have me. And I come against this dizziness. I come against all forms of disorientation. I bind the devil. I bind the devil. And I was still disoriented. I said, Father, give me wisdom. Holy Spirit, speak to me. What do I need to do? So I start Googling dizziness after waking up in the morning. Vertigo natural healing for vertical and I came across this procedure I couldn't think the name of it at the time I mean right now and I did my best to read it put my glasses on uh, and it said lay at the end of your bed roll your head one way let the chemical apparently there's a chemical that's overflowing from the brain into the ear that causes the disorientation at least that's what the science said and to get that chemical back you had to do this maneuver and I followed the maneuver as I'm praying I said Lord please let this work I got too much to do today Lord I don't want to have no vertigo Lord heal me and I'm doing the procedure trusting God Lord I'm trusting you that this will work and I rolled my head to the other side, did whatever it told me to do. I got up, I sat there for about 10 seconds and meditated and said, God, before I open my eyes, please let this have worked, heal my body. I opened my eyes, got up and walked to the bathroom. The disorientation went away, the dizziness went away, the wobbliness went away. And I just started thanking him. I said, God, thank you. Thank you for wisdom. Sometimes the answer is just wisdom. Sometimes it's just Holy Spirit giving us knowledge. Sometimes it's supernatural. Sometimes it's pills and medicines and natural substances out in the garden. And sometimes it's just God saying, I created the body. This is how we're going to fix it. For all you all that got back issues and sciatica nerve issues, there are certain stretches that will relieve that pain. It ain't always the devil. It ain't always the devil. It is the enemy causing distraction. But if you take that knee and bring that knee up to a place to where it takes that pressure off and you leave it long enough, I think there's a maneuver or procedure that allows the muscles to reset and the flesh to reset. And next thing you know, your sciatica doesn't hurt as much. For those with migraines, yes, the devil is the enemy, but there are certain triggers. Stay away from those triggers. You absolutely can pray, ask for prayer. Blessed hus hu hubby, we got to get out of here. We just on here now. Brother Ken is literally rambling now. I got to go. Jane, have a good day at work. She says, starting to get busy. Blessed husband, how can we pray for you? And we'll pray and get out of here. Put your prayer request in here. If you if it's just a general prayer, we'll close it with a general prayer for everybody. Father, we thank you today for your word. We thank you today for another awesome visit from you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for healing and setting us free. We thank you, Lord, for giving us revelation, knowledge, and aha moments. We thank you, Holy Spirit. For everybody you sit here today, we ask that your blessings and your presence and your peace be upon 
everybody. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would move by your power, move by your spirit and heal where people are hurting. Help people, God, where they're in deficit, Lord. We ask that you give them back some margin in their lives, God. I'm asking, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, that you heal marriages, heal finances, heal health, heal people's kids. Lord, I'm asking today that you would just go before everybody and do what you do best. Be our comforter. Be our guide. Be our deliverer. Be a present help in the time of trouble. Hide us. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. All right. Last plug for the day, and we're going to close. Free marriage conference. Go up to my profile. Click that link faithlove.site please come face to face I want to see your faces I want to hear your voices we're not going to open this up to thousands of people on TikTok whoever needs it and wants it quickly register because once 200 300 seats fill up I'm closing it that's too many people to be trying to conference and talk and speak over people and mute people not doing it for the numbers we're doing it for those who really need this so go register I only do this about once a week, once every two weeks. Brother Ken is a life coach. If you need some structure, some discipline in the areas of business, 24 years in corporate, rent a 501c3 for 12 years, church leadership for another 20, run my own LLCs. I'm an adjunct professor in business. I'm a strength and conditioning coach, just so much to the point. I got two sons, me a son and a daughter to play college basketball. At 49, I'm still fit. If you need a health plan, if you need someone to guide you, be somewhat structured and strict, like a real coach, I can do this virtually for you. We'll do face-to-faces through uh, Google Meet, and I just want to help you. That's part of my LLC. I'm very clear about this. You go check it out. Go read the, the website. It's abundantly.site. www.abundantly.site. Abundantly.site. Brother Ken does have Christian merchandise that he's trying to grow in that business. Go check that website out again. It's up there on the profile. I want you all to have an amazing day. We'll close this out tomorrow with prayer, our final day of prayer. We do this Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Central, until the Lord says the same. And then on Sunday at 7 p.m., a fresh word from God. We've been studying the entire book of Samuel. We're in our final chapter of Samuel, David's entire 15 years. If you want to go back and study any of what we've read in Samuel, it's on YouTube. Go up to my profile. And I still need to load Tuesday night's Bible study. We do a Bible study every Tuesday. We've been studying Romans. We got halfway through Romans chapter 9. It was so good we had to stop. I'm only going to give you an hour. I'm not on here on Bible study nights to try to take your, your evening from you. So I still need to go load that. I'm going to load today's prayer. And I may uh, take this last hour cut this last hour even yesterday's last hour and i put it under a section i'm calling convos after prayer so people who just want to listen to the prayer can listen to the prayer people who want to hear these kind of conversations then it's in that section called convos after prayer so i got some work to go do i need to go edit and cut and i put some new stuff on my tiktok too i got so much content i'm behind on and so i'm in the process of trying to load eight to ten videos on facebook every day eight to ten videos on tiktok every day minister to the people of god privately do the business stuff write the books but i enjoy this and if i got to be up till 11 12 o'clock at night working on that other stuff i'm happily able to do that because this is what i like to do what bible do i use i use three or four i use the nasb it is the most accurate for me I have a Bible chart. Go to my profile, Miss Nikki, and in my, uh, what's it called, pinned? I've pinned a Bible uh, reference of where the different Bibles uh, uh, pull from, how close they are to the scripts they found in the caves, to people just making it up as they go. I use the NASB. 
I use the living, the new living version, and I use the uh, Christian standard Bible. I also have a King James as a fourth reference. And then I have a, uh, uh, what's that other one? The amplified. I use the amplified as a reference. God bless you all tomorrow, 6 a.m.